Hello there, Booktube. My name is Daniel. Welcome back to my channel, Guilty Feet. Mary Bradley waits at home in the nuclear. I've got no rhythm. Uh, and today I'm going to bring you my last book haul of 2022. And it's a doozy uh, because I'm in London. Uh, this is my mum's apartment. This is one of her cross-stitch things she did. This is another one of her cross-stitches that she thinks, and they're all over the apartment. Uh, maybe one day I'll take you around and show you all the, all the work that she's done. Um, so I sent a whole bunch of books here that I ordered ahead of time, and I also geared up for the Boxing Day half-price sale uh, um, that I had a fair inkling was going to take place at Waterstones. Um, and I'll talk to you about how I did in that and, uh, and where else I went and got a whole bunch of brand new hardbacks at half price. That's exciting. But for now, I'll take you through the other stuff that I bought. So we'll, we'll do everything. Um, yeah, so it's a fairly special, you know, a good mix of, so, so a lot of the stuff that I ordered, the, the second hand stuff is, um, it's continuing projects that I'm on. We'll show, show those. And then, um, other books that I think is the, the um, 2023 Tournament of Books has released its um, shortlist. So they'll eventually come down to 16 books. They start with 18. So there's 15 for the playoffs and then three, one of the three books will go into the final 16. Um, and I try to read around half of the, the, the books there. And I read a couple already, like Night Crawling by Lila Motley, which inexplicably is in the final 16. Just... Uh, I'm looking forward to voting that out. Um, but there's a few of books that I purchased there. And then also went through a whole bunch of um, end of year lists, people saying what their best books of, of 2022 were and, and bought a bunch of those. So most of these titles, uh, even the new stuff, will be sort of familiar. Maybe one or two surprises that haven't got much play on Booktube. It's going to take me the next few months to get through and read all of these so it'll be you know, we'll talk about it again when I actually have something to say about the books after I've read them okay let's start uh with the beginning this is because uh, I already started reading this this is one of the books that I ordered and was waiting for me here this is Leonard and Hungry Paul by Ronan uh, Hessian I don't remember someone I must have read about this online someone was raving about this book um claiming that nothing very much happens but it's just sweet and lovely uh, and I'm uh, you know two chapters in or you know however much in 30 pages in and so far it is sweet and lovely and um if it's one thing I've learned in the last couple of years about particularly in 2022 is that you can't get enough of things that are just sweet and lovely so that's Leonard Hungry Paul I'll, I'll do a review of it when I'm done but I'm really enjoying this an Irish author I think he's a, a musician Ronan Hessian has another newer book out in this but this is from a couple of years ago and so far so lovely published by a press I don't know of Blue Nose Books. Anyone know Blue Nose? Blue, sorry, that's even with my glasses on. Blue Moose Books. My glasses that I bought for one pound in Poundland. Blue Moose Books. Yeah, sorry, I've got no voice. I had a bit of a flu, but this is what you get. Uh, uh, Leonard Hungry Paul, Ron Hessian started reading that. I read already uh, because I knew it was going to take me a short while. This is Mick Heron standing by the wall. So this is Mick Heron, the Slow Horses um, um, series of. British spy novels and be made into a, a show on um, Apple TV and the first six episodes and now they're releasing the second six episodes and they're great the, the TV show's great the books are fantastic I read his latest full-length novel in the series Bad Actors came out earlier this year and I bought an hardback and he, he cleverly puts out these little um, chapter books this you know this Three ninety nine. I bought this from Amazon. Maybe got it for a slight discount. If the whole thing is is fifty pages and it's just a short story that comes after the last novel, and it's just the very definition of a stocking filler. But I'm, I'm a bit of a completist, and I like this. And it's about Roddy Ho, who's one of the, the most endearing and revolting characters in the uh, Jackson Lamb series. So that was Standing by the Wall um, by Mick Heron, which I read already, and leads me into a bunch of other Mick Heron books. So I've been reading the. The um, Slough House series, the Slow Horses series, otherwise known as the Jackson Lamb books, of which I think there are seven or eight now, not including the little novellas. There's, there's a few in between books, like Port of Five books, as they call them on the, on um, uh, Goodreads. But there's an earlier series of Hitch, which, which I never read, and I bought the first two of those. This is Down Cemetery Road by Mick Heron, and The Last Voice You Hear by Mick Heron. This is one and two in the series. Totally don't match at all, so that's uh, in part of the course. And then this is. Um, also pick this up. This is a, a short stories, Mick Heron short stories, uh, of which one of them I think is a Jackson Lab story. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm, I seem to be all in on Mick Heron because everything that I've read of him so far has been uh, joy. So these are good uh, palate cleansers in between. I've got quite a lot of uh, um, um, 
literary fiction novels here. So these are always uh, a fun read in between. Okay, so these, I've got the next two books in my uh, um, uh, May Grade project. So um, I've got this, um, this is the newer uh, um, Penguin uh, Modern Classics edition, or they call it Penguin Classics. Uh, this is The Hanged Man of saint Folion. Oh, yeah. I don't know, I originally published as something else, probably. Uh, um, what does it say here? Originally published as Le Pondu de saint Folia in 1931. These, I've just had a, a blast with my Maigre so far. This is 140 pages, and that's great. And then I got a different edition because I'm picking these off second hand. So um, this is A Man's Head by Georges Simenon. Uh, so this one's translated by Geoffrey Sainsbury. Let's see, this one is translated by Linda Coverdale. And I, I don't care enough to compare the translations. You know, they, they're, I figure they're pretty readable and disposable either way. This is also 130, 135 pages. Uh, originally published as uh, La Tête d'un Homme, which was a pretty good definition of a man's, a man's head. And was, it was originally uh, published in translation as The Battle of Nerves in a book called The Patience of Maigre. So... 1939, they were collecting these and translate them, they gave them to Ned, but uh, uh, Man's Head seems to be a more um, uh, um, loyal translation uh, uh, um, of the original French. Um, so that's uh, the next two in my May Grey series, then I've got the next two in my uh, Hercule Poirot um, project. So I'm up to uh, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, which by all accounts is one of the best um, of the, uh, of the uh, Poirot. Uh, I've got that, and I've got The Big Four. Um, those are the next, I guess, four and five in in uh, in Poirot, maybe, or three or four. In four or five, I think. Um, so I've got two of those. I, I picked up this just because I loved the the uh, the cover, and because I first read, I read the first one in this series uh, many years ago, 20 years ago, and, and found it a bit tough going and didn't read any further. Um, and so now I've picked up, after about 20 years, the second um, in the uh, Lou Harper, is that the name of the... the uh, Detective, or was that just the, the name in the in the Paul Newman? Anyway, what a great cover to have Paul Newman on the cover of this. Um, Ross McDonald's The Drowning Pool. I don't even remember what the first one was called, so I hope it's not a problem. Um, uh, Lou Archer, sorry, yes. So Paul uh, Newman uh, in the movie, the first, the first movie I think was called Harper, and then the second movie was The Drowning Pool um, because he renamed the character Harper, but actually it's Lou Archer is the name of the character in the book. So I like this. I love a good classic 70s uh, um, uh, uh, movie tie and cover. So uh, I'm going to give him another try, Ross McDonald, uh, one of the, the, the great um, um, detective writers. Uh, this is an author that I've read everything by and kind of skipped this when it came out. So I had a chance to pick it up second hand because uh, I'm going to keep reading everything by James Elroy. This is called Widespread Panic, came out a couple of years ago. So um, um, James Elroy, Widespread Panic. Uh, yeah, always always a fun ride. Um, this is a book that I actually wrote to the uh, um, press office and said, can you send me a copy to review? And they did. Uh, so I've got uh, Percival Everett's latest Doctor No, which I think Mark Nash read and didn't love. Uh, but I've got a free copy, it's an advanced copy, not for sale. And I'm thrilled. You know, I said I wanted to read more Percival Everett. I've read two so far. Um, Loved the Trees was, was uh, uh, okay on... Percival Everett by Virgil Russell by Percival Everett, and this is his latest Doctor Note, so I'll get to that. Uh, then, next project is my ongoing uh, Rougar Macar. This is the third uh, in Zola's um, 20 uh, volume um, collection. Uh, this is The Belly of Paris, uh, translated by Brian Nelson, who I believe translated the first two I've got. I'm buying them in these Oxford classics. Um, I prefer the Penguin Classics when I can, but they don't publish them all, so I'm going with the Oxford Classics, and they'll all line up with these, with that red uh, uh, bar at the top and these beautiful white spines, um, originally published in French as something completely different, of course. Uh, uh, Le Ventre de Paris. Okay, okay. Then this was a book that uh, um, is on that 2023, I believe, um, tournament of books. Uh, um, and I don't know how to pronounce the surname at all, but i uh, um, seen a lot of good reviews of Olga Dies Dreaming by Zotchil uh, 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 Gonzalez. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I really could have spent some time and looked up how to pronounce your name, so I do apologise. But I heard good things about this and picked this up really cheap, I think. I got this on eBay. So this is a brand new hardback, 1699 
Uh, I didn't see this when I was in the shops today. I was up in Waterstones, up in Falls. I didn't see much of this. And I think maybe it came out earlier in 2022. If it, if it even came out in 2020, it came out published in the United States, 2022, published in Great Britain in 2022. Okay, so I didn't see this much in the shop, so that either means it's sold out or it's forgotten already, because I bought this for like five, six pounds on, on eBay. I was very pleased with that. Uh, um, so that's that. Okay, now we're getting to, so that was a new book. Uh, and now we're going through a series of new uh, books that I bought, novels. So let me tell you my, my, my process in all this. I had a fair idea that Waterstones was going to do a half price sale starting on Boxing Day and running for two or three days. Boxing Day, I, and that was Monday, Monday the 26th of December. Um, and because last year, when I was in America over this period, um, Barnes & Noble had a half price sale. And the Barnes & Noble half price sale was every single thing that was a hardback in the store was being sold at half price. So I was excited to go and, and have the same thing. Uh, it seemed from, from what I was able to glean before Boxing Day that Watson's was saying, they weren't saying every hardback half price, they were saying thousands of hardbacks at half price. So it was qualified, it wasn't universal. So you know, I had to walk into the store, and this is in store. I had to walk into the store and see what was going on. Online, uh, Watson's was also had some of his books at half price. So I started looking at the books that you know, I have a list of books that I was going after um, and I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, well, why would I go all the way uh, um, uh, to find a Waterstones store? You know, probably if I think about this, if they're selling them at half price, Amazon will be matching that and selling them at half price. And so the first thing I did was, was went through the list of books that I was kind of interested in and said, well, let's see what Amazon's doing. And sure enough, um, with a couple of these books, at least, uh, um, that I had been looking at for a while and noticing that Amazon was not significantly discounting, uh, um, this week they were. So in anticipation of the sale coming up, in the bricks and mortar sale coming up in Waterstones, uh, Amazon had already started discounting books. There were also one or two books that I saw Amazon wasn't discounting to 50%, but Waterstones was discounting online. So I was able to reserve that and for pickup in the Waterston store. I knew I was going to try and get there on Wednesday to the, the flagship store in Piccadilly. So we'll get to that. So first of all are the three books that I ordered from Amazon, which was already selling at half price. So I didn't need to go out and bring it back and walk around town carrying it because they were delivered straight to my mum's apartment here. So the first one is a book that I've been kind of interested in. Don't know if I'm going to, to like it because it may turn out to be uh, tribe, but had a lot of great reviews and it's also in the Tournament of Books Final 16, so that's a good reason to, to get to it. And hadn't been discounted anywhere uh, uh, until this week on Amazon. So I picked up Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin uh, for half price. So cover price is $16.99. I paid £8.50 for this. £8.49, I think it was on Amazon. Uh, the next one is a book I've had such a great experience with the first two novels by this author, uh, which I read in the wrong order. I read the second one and then I read, went back and read the first. And each one has been a superior bit of um, novel writing. So I picked up uh, Mercury's Pictures Presents by Anthony Mara. Also, cover price £16.99 and I found £8.49. Uh, so half price, hardback. Uh, pleased with that. And then the last one, uh, uh, an author that we all know, um, George Saunders. I've read pretty much everything he's done, short stories, his one novel, uh, his non-fiction. Uh, um, just, I'm, I'm sort of all in on George Saunders. I bought the the, um, the the last bit of non-fiction in hardback and managed to pick up Liberation Day, which is another collection of short stories. And he's probably the greatest living uh, short story writer uh, uh, still working today. Uh, this was 18 99 full price, and I paid half of that, so that would be £9.49. Um, George Saunders, Liberation Day. So those three books I got from Amazon delivered to my mum's apartment. Then um, on Monday night, so Boxing Day, uh, my wife and I took a trip to, I was looking at seeing, you know, that was the first day of the Waterstones sale, but unclear exactly on what that was going to mean. Um, so I was looking at Waterstones um, stores in, the, in London uh, um, and their closing times because Boxing Day, no, no one was staying open particularly late. A lot of stores closing at five o'clock. My wife wasn't feeling so well. I have since developed this uh, cold and, and hoarse throat. Um, so what we decided to do was get in the car, borrow my mum's car, and we drove to the Westfield Shopping Mall near Shepherd's Bush uh, because the Waterstones there was, was going to be over until 9pm. So 
So I thought we'll go. You know, I was actually I, I was during the day I was working uh, uh, remotely. Um, so we waited till about six o'clock in the evening, and we drove out to the the uh, Westville shopping mall and mooched around. And I went into the Waterstones there, and I think I have some video which I'll play for you now. <laughs> And um, uh, so there, I was. You know, there were books that had stickers on them, which is yeah. So remember, last year in Barnes and Noble, everything with a hardback was half price. In in Waterstones, in um, uh, the Westfield Mall, there were books with stickers on them indicating their half price. I'll give you a link. I'll show you. I'll show you this up in a second. And there were books without stickers on them, and it was very unclear what was half price and what wasn't. One second. Oh, excuse me. Um, so I, you know, asked people and I played dumb and just said, well, and they said, yes, no, it can be. Because what ha was happening was you brought the books to the counter and they were adding the discount at that point. Now, putting stickers on things seems to be a ridiculous... So essentially, it was all fiction, non-fiction, but not um, cookbooks. I don't think, um, you know, not other, other uh, outside the fiction, non-fiction main sections... They weren't really half price. Um, so I snuck in one graphic novel, which I think if they noticed, they probably wouldn't have given me half price. But they just rang up the discounts half price, and this was everything that I bought there. Um, so this is a book that I knew nothing about and saw it and decided I would pick it up because half price. Um, this is The Memory Monster by Yishai Salid. So this is translated from the Hebrew, um, translated by um, Yarden Greenspan. This is by Servant Stale, a book I think was originally published in. 2017 and just recently published in English. So I always like to pick up um, Israeli novelists that I, that I don't know Yishai Sarid at all. But um, this was selling new 12.99, so I picked up for £6.50. Uh, I'm very pleased with that to pick up an unknown writer in hardback, a new um, novel for £6.50. And that's fine. Uh, after that, um, yeah, these were a couple of books. This one I think is on the um, Tournament of Books, um, um, Final 16. Uh, and this is The Book of Goose by Yi Yun Lee, which I don't know anything about, um, except also showed up in a bunch of uh, best of end of year um, things in Time or Esquire or all these doing. I typed in best books of 2022 and then literally went through each of the lists. So New York Times, um, um, a, book of, uh, a list of notable books, Guardian top books and Esquire, whatever it was. Uh, and this name came up a couple of times, so I picked this up, Book of Goose. doesn't have a sticker on it saying it's half price, but this was half price, so full price this was 69.99, so I picked this up at £8.50. Uh, it's another one that showed up on, on those notable books, uh, The Furrows by Namwali Serpel. Don't know anything about it, uh, but looking forward to this. This was current price 69.99, so got that for half price. Um, this was a book that I did know and was actively looking for, and here's that half price sticker. So what interests me is now the sale is finished, or running till Wednesday night. So tomorrow morning or tonight after the store closes, is someone going around and peeling off all the stickers? Just an idiotic way to run the sale. It was so badly organised and so unclear. Um, <coughs> Sorry, another coffee break. Uh, um, uh, anyway, so this has got the half price sticker on it, and this is All the Living and the Dead by Hayley Campbell. Um, I just heard good things about this book. Uh, um, Hayley Campbell, not that you want to define anyone by their, uh, who they're related to. She is the daughter of Eddie Campbell, who is a, uh, an artist. Uh, um, uh, the, the work of his that I have is um, uh, Alan Moore's From Hell, which he drew, you know, Alan Moore's huge graphic novel about Jack the Ripper. Uh, not a big fan of Eddie Campbell's style, to be fair. Anyway, Hayley Campbell is his daughter. She's a journalist, broadcaster, etc. And this is a book about um, death, I believe, uh, uh, non-fiction and blurbed on the cover by Neil Gaiman. On the back, we've got Nigella Lawson, Caitlin Doty, I don't know, Tuppence Middleton, 
um, and uh, and Charlie Gilmore, author of Featherhood, which I haven't read, but that was you know, if I'd seen that, I might have picked that up as well. Anyway, interest in this, uh, um, uh, all about death. Uh, don't mind that at all. Get a non-fiction. Then this was the most expensive book I bought. Even half price cost as much as I would, you would pay full price for a book, but. Um, I hadn't seen this discount anywhere. So this is a book, full price was £35. That's a lot of money for a book. And the biggest discount I'd seen online was maybe down, I think Amazon were doing it, it was £27.50, um, which is a lot of money spent on a book, but they were doing it half price in Waterstones. So I picked up uh, Bob Dylan's The Philosophy of Modern Song, uh, and Nobel Prize winner for literature, uh, um, uh, Bob Dylan. And this is a book where he goes, mentions a bunch of songs and writes little essays about them. And it goes from uh, Knack the Knife and, uh, by Bobby Darren and My Generation by The Who to, uh, I, I saw Elvis Costello's in here and uh, um, you know, all sorts of, uh, um, uh, Warren Zevon, uh, and just some interesting uh, uh, Gypsies, Tramps and Thieves by Cher, which is a fantastic song. And he writes little essays about each one and I'm here for it. So I paid 17 pounds that's a lot of money, 17 pounds 50 but why not? I've got it in our back and, and uh, um, no, no, uh, no, uh, no excuses. Uh, um, and then this was the giant uh, um, uh, graphic novel that I picked up, which I've been looking for to, to find cheaply. This is Monsters by Barry Windsor Smith, uh, um, who you may know, he was a, a very um, uh, important artist for Conan, which I was never interested in, but then he was also in the, in the first, uh, uh, um, he, he did a lot of art for Valiant back in the day when Valiant was first uh, on the up. Uh, um, so I'm talking early 90s when I was still buying comics. Uh, and this is, a, this is a whole standalone novel which he has um, written and drawn himself. Uh, give you a glimpse at some of the artwork. So it's black and white, and those are classic Barry Windsor Smith heads, which are all sort of rectangular. Um, and this new was, came out last year, and I've been waiting for to. to try and pick up a cheap copy. This new was £25. So I got this for £12.50 and I'm pretty pleased with that because, you know, I read graphic novels and I just fancied a whole major important work by uh, um, a very well-known artist. So that is Barry Windsor Smith Monsters. Okay, we're in the final stretch now. So next up is, uh, uh, so that was, uh, um, those were the, the book one, two, three, four, five, six books that I bought in Waterstones in the Westfield Centre, um, and I ha also happened to have, so they were all half price, and I happened to have a £20 um, voucher because I won a quiz online. Uh, and so I, had a, so I got those books uh, and then put in my £20 match, and all six books cost me 42 quid. Um, so for six hardback books, including one which retailed at £35, to spend £42 on all of them, um, I was thrilled with. Uh, um, then today, uh, um, Excuse me, my wife and I went up to town and we got on the tube and we went to South Kent, the, the, the Victoria and Albert Museum, had a, a wander around there um, and a nice cup of tea in the tea room there, very, very uh, genteel and lovely. Um, and then after that, I went to, back to Piccadilly to Watson's flagship store. Um, to see what they were doing there and what, you know, if they had other choice, you know, because I'm a nerd. Um, so first of all, here's a good story. So I had reserved uh, um, at the Waterstones store in Piccadilly, two books. One of which was a book you've already seen, which was the um, uh, the Gabrielle Zevon book, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Uh, so since reserving it at Waterstones, I'd already purchased it from Amazon, so I didn't need that. Um, but this other book I did want, uh, because this wasn't being uh, discounted so heavily on Amazon. So I get there, and I'm just about to go up to the counter and ask them that, you know, I, here's, there's two books put aside in my name, one of them I don't want, but I'd like the other one, please. And the woman in front of me said, uh, was, uh, was talking to the, uh, uh, the assistant, said, do you have a copy of Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin? Um, and she said, no, we're sold out, sorry, because they've got this half-price sale, and this is the end, last day of the half-price sale. So she was a bit disappointed, and I said, look, I am really uh, apologise for interrupting and sticking my nose in. Oh, sorry. It's a weird interaction, but... Let me tell you that I ordered and had a copy of that put aside and I don't want it. So why don't they bring me my copy and you buy it? And she she uh, didn't quite know what to make of this, you know, this strange man overhearing conversation, offering her the book that she was looking for that she'd just been told they sold out. Uh, so I really tried to not be, you know, anyway, the, the uh, assistant went and brought back the two books, including the one I'm about to show you. And she bought the Tomorrow Tomorrow and I sort of faded into the background so she didn't think I was after anything or wanting. But it gave me enormous, enormous
enormous pleasure to know that someone else was able to purchase the book they wanted at half price. Uh, um, anyway, that's that story. So the book that, that I did get from that Waterstones was um, Alice Smith's companion piece, The Hardback. Um, so this was, again, half price. This is 69 new, and I got this for £8.49. Um, this, I believe, is a companion piece to the, the Four Seasons uh, um, um, uh, quadrilogy, what do you call that, quartet. Uh, um, and I loved all of those. I know Ali Smith doesn't appeal to everyone, uh, but I was all in on, on each of those books. Um, and really happy to pick this up. And I wish I had all four of the, the, the seasonal books in these hardback editions as well, but I don't. But uh, I do have this companion piece in hardback, so that's nice. Uh, and they have a good price. Okay. Um, but then I spent the rest of the time mooching around uh, um, uh, Waterstones and didn't really find anything else that I wanted. I, I asked them, do they have a the couple of other books? And they sent me, the, uh, we found uh, um, two of the books that I was looking for. And when I took the front, they said, no, these aren't included in the half price sale. So I was just fed up. I walked out of Waterstones. I decided to walk cross over Leicester Square and start walking on the Charing Cross Road and I'd go to Foyles. And as I'm getting to Foyles, uh, um, it occurs to me, even before I had confirmation, well, if Waterstones is doing this in-store half-price sale, I bet Foyles is, you, know, you can't have something like that. It's a small ecosystem book buying in London. These two stores, the, the, the flagship Waterstones store, uh, and there are Waterstones all over the UK, but Foyles is, as far as, you know, I think there's one big store, maybe a couple of satellites. Um, but you can't have within half a mile of each other, one having a half-price sale, half-price another. Sure enough, and I, this is, as I'm walking up the Charing Cross Road, Sure enough, as I walked into Foils, they were also having a half price sale. And theirs was a little clearer. There were some books that weren't in the half price sale, but there were also a bunch of books that I saw that Waterstones didn't offer a half price, and Foils did. Again, some of them had stickers, and some of them didn't, which means, again, that someone tonight has to go through the entire store taking off the stickers. Which seems ridiculous. Anyway, these are the books I picked up there. First one, Impulse Purchase. I don't need to, to read this. I've read a bunch of books by this author. I like I like him. I've read his fiction and non-fiction. This is a book that was totally unnecessary. But then when I saw it at half price, I thought, you know, I'll give it a try. Um, and this is Nick Hornby's uh, Dickens and Prince, which is a ridiculous premise for a book uh, to write about these two geniuses, Charles Dickens and Prince Rogers Nelson. Uh, but uh, um, full price, this was 9 99 So I got this for a fiver, five quid. And I'm absolutely delighted. Why not? The whole thing is is uh, uh, 100 pages, less than 100 pages, 90 pages. Um, and you know, I've read other um, nonfiction by Nick Hornby. He's got a, a a clear and and to me quite endearing voice. So why not for for five pounds, 100 pages on listen to him try and compare Dickens and Prince and let's see if I can swallow it. Um, then I picked up. Um, this was I think Foyle's book of the year showed up in a bunch of other lists. I don't know anything about this at all. This is I'm a Fan by Sheena Patel. Um, and when I got to the desk, I was showing this to somebody. It wasn't clear, it was covered in plastic. Uh, there's still no price on this at all, as far as I can tell. Um, the Observer Top 10 Best Debut Novelists. I don't know anything about I'm a, I'm a Fan by Sheena Patel. When I took it to the desk, and I was going to ask some other questions, I was looking at some other books, uh, they said, oh no, it's not. it's not half price. Oh, okay, well, I'll put it back. I'm not. I, I, I don't even know how much it was, let alone how much it was a half price. And, he, and the guy there said, Did you really want it at half price? I said, Yes. So he said, Well, I'll ring it up for your half price. So thank you, um, um, anonymous man in foils. I believe repaying my kindness for the woman <coughs> in, in Waterstones who got that other copy of Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. I feel like it was paid forward that I managed to pick up I'm a fan for half price, even though. It wasn't supposed to be discounted. So I like this as a square book. It's like a naked hardcover. Um, and uh, I'll let you know how that goes. And then finally, uh, last one. I'm sure 30 minutes of this book, all you crazy, crazy people. Um, this is a book, again, was I think on New York uh, Times and Notable Books and a bunch of uh, some other places mentioned it. Um, this is nonfiction. Uh, um, this is Strangers to Ourselves by Rachel Aviv, who I believe is a staff writer at The New Yorker. And I think this is about mental health. Um, and uh, uh, just um, it, it, the, the blurb uh, interested me enough to want to pick it up. Um, uh, it, I, you know, I don't read enough nonfiction because there's so much of it. So I really need someone to sort of uh, um, poke me in the eye and say, take a look at this. 
a, a compassionate, courageous, and riveting look at the ways we talk about and understand ourselves in periods of crisis and distress. Uh, um, so I'm looking forward to getting to that. Uh, and that is a bunch of books uh, in a book hall. So that's probably my reading for the next two or three months, even though I've still got 100 books or more on my two year old pile back in Israel. Uh, um, I only have hand luggage. Uh, um, so, I don't, so I think I'll be giving a lot of these books to my friend, the pilot, and he will bring them to me when he comes. He's, he's flying, leaving in January. I think he's coming again in February. So I don't need, you know, some of these books will, will not make it back to Israel for a, a month or two, but that's fine. I'll just take the ones that, uh, that I think I'm actually going to get to in the next um, six weeks. Uh, um, and that's it. That's it. Oh, listen, that's the last book I'll going to do, I promise. Although, there are some books that I've ordered that haven't arrived yet. So I've got the second and third in uh, Rachel Cusk's um, um, trilogy. I've got My Phantoms by Gwendolyn Riley, which I picked up secondhand in hardcover. I've got a book, I forgot what it's called, um, that I saw uh, CJ uh, and Jalen uh, um, um, rave about in their end of year roundup of the best books. I've ordered that. Um, uh, and another couple of books on tyranny I've ordered. And they're all according to eBay and, and where I've ordered them from. They're not due to come till the first week in January, so subject to, to Christmas uh, um, um, mail. Um, and my wife and I are going away um, on Monday for a couple of days, and one of the places we're going, I saw, has a second-hand bookstore there. So uh, um, I'll be looking there. So this is not the end by any means. This is 30-odd you know, books, and there's more already coming, and I'll probably be buying more because I'm nuts. Uh, um, good night. God bless. I hope you all have a fantastic end to 2022. I hope 2023 uh, is everything you would wish for yourself. Uh, um, take care. God bless. Bye.